Good afternoon. How are you all doing today? Thanks again for joining us uh, today. And as always, I always ask, so please uh, silence the cell phones, vibrate, turn them off. Um, my name is Mohammed Mohammed. I'm the executive director here at the Jerusalem Fund and uh, Palestine Center. Uh, and as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, so thank you for coming and thank you to everybody watching online. Uh, it's also an honor to introduce our special guest today, uh, Ms. Leila Hassan, uh, who will be talking about the woman in Hebron Cooperative, Hebron and Khalil. Um, thank you for being here, for being here from all the way from Palestine. Uh, so Ms. Leila Hassan is one of the first women shopkeepers in the old city souk uh, or market of Hebron, uh, and she has been on a special uh, speaking tour uh, to raise awareness about the important work of the Women in Hebron Cooperative. Um, again, it's an honor to have you here, uh, especially for somebody from an area like Hebron where it's, I, I'm sure life is difficult over there, so thank you. Uh, so Women in Hebron was established uh, to provide, the wom uh, provide women the resources uh, to provide for themselves and their families uh, through the production and sales of Palestinian handicraft items. Uh, since it was founded in 2005, Women in Hebron has grown from a small table along the main thoroughfare of the old city, uh, the old city souk, in the occupied H2 sector, uh, which is a short distance from the Ibrahimi Mosque, uh, to now a permanent fixture in the old city. Uh, with the aim of economically empowering Palestinian women, and their uh, families and maintaining cultural traditions through the creation of traditional handicrafts such as rugs, uh, embroidery, and other items. Uh, Women in Hebron also works to resist the narrative of occupation in Palestine. Uh, and as you can see to your left, I think a number of you have already purchased some items, uh, but Ms. Hassan has brought some very beautiful items that the cooperative sells. Uh, so please support them after the event and buy something. There's uh, many different things, and they all look very, very nice. So please support them. Uh, so after Ms. Hassan speaks, we're going to have a Q&A session. Um, again, as always, uh, please wait for the mic to come to you and keep your questions brief and to the point so that everybody has a chance. Uh, and for the online audience, you can tweet your questions to Palestine Center. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ms. Leila Hassan. Is in Hebron without rights and dignity? 850 settlers with rights. In Hebron, occupied Palestinians and their Israeli occupiers come face to face on a daily basis. That's because in these buildings, Israeli settlers occupy the top floors while Palestinian shopkeepers try to run their businesses right below. An estimated 700 to 850 Israeli settlers live here in buildings that they illegally occupy and they're protected by thousands of Israeli soldiers and police. This is Yehuda Shul. He served in the Israeli army in Hebron. At the end of his military service, he co-founded Breaking the Silence with other Israeli soldiers to document the crimes of the army against the Palestinian people here in Hebron and across occupied Palestine. The concept and the IDF goes this way. If Palestinians will get the feeling that the IDF is all the time everywhere, they'll be afraid to attack. So what do you do to make them feel this way? You make your presence felt. Walk in the streets of the old city, of the Kasbah, bump into a house. It's not a house we have intelligence about, yeah? It's a random house. Wake up the family, search the place. You can yourself imagine the dynamics, what happens when a military unit enters to your house 3 o'clock at night. You go out to the street, knock on some doors, make some noise, run to the other corner of the street, invade another house. And that's how you basically pass your eight-hour shift. So with Israeli soldiers harassing innocent Palestinian families, settlers attacking Palestinians, and Israelis taking over Palestinian homes and claiming them as their own, it's no wonder that the old city of Hebron has become a ghost town. 
يعني اللي بياخد ارضك ودارك بياخد روحك فانا بشعر انه انا روحي بتطلع Palestinians are banned from walking or driving on many roads Dozens of checkpoints restrict the movement of Palestinians through their city and Palestinian shops have been closed by the Israeli army. هم حوالي 500 محل او اكثر هذول مغلقه من امر عسكري اليوم بيرجع تدريجيا يعني كانه واحد قاعد على بساط وبنسحب من تحت رجله شوي شوي. Hebron is one of the largest cities in the West Bank but Palestinians are banned from setting foot in one of the main areas. This is Shuhada Street. It was once a bustling neighborhood, but now the doors of Palestinian homes here have been welded shut. If residents want to get in or out, they have to climb in through the roof or through holes in the wall. But Israeli settlers can go wherever they want in Hebron carrying machine guns. And life for Palestinians in Hebron is only getting worse. The Israeli occupation of this city continues to this day. This is the Abu Rajab family home. In July 2017, around 100 Israelis raided the house and took it over. Israeli forces used violence against some members of the Abu Rajab family Israeli settlers celebrated. But the Abu Rajab family was determined to defend their house. The settlers occupied one part of the building for eight months, while the Abu Rajabs continued to live in another part of the property. In March 2018, the settlers agreed to leave the house. But because the Israeli army had declared the area around the property a closed military zone, Palestinians are still banned from entering. The settlers may have left for now, but the Israeli occupation of the Abu Rajab family's home continues. <laughs> The Abu Rajab family's problems are emblematic of the reality all Palestinians face. An occupied house, in an occupied street, in an occupied city, in a land that is becoming more occupied every day.
Basics Branch is a project where BA students from Central St. Martins and uh, embroidery artisans from Palestine have been able to collaborate in a design process uh, to come up with new contemporary products um, inspired by Palestinian culture and heritage. So this project gave our students a chance to work with artisans in Palestine and because of the situation there it was an experience for the students to learn more about the restrictions that people there would have on travel and on trade which perhaps as students from across other parts of the world they wouldn't perhaps understand. Yeah, women in Hebron is 150 women from eight villages around Hebron. They do cross stitches, carpets and muslim clothes. Yeah, my mother she taught me when I was little and my sister and I think everyone teach her daughters how to do things. It started from my home myself alone for three years, did many designs. Then I shared my idea with other women from the village and we started with 30 women and then now we have 150 women. I think it was the nature of kind of long distance collaboration and we were taught about kind of Palestine and that was something I hadn't really been totally aware of before. I mean, you see it on the periphery and you know it, like conflict is going on, but actually it was realizing quite how much their, their lifestyle is impacted by political movement, the fact that there are women, the fact that there's no kind of economy. That's an issue with this project, it's kind of how is textiles and how is design, how can we confront things which people usually wouldn't like to talk about, you know, they ignore. And I just selected a kind of five or six images, colour palette and just hope that they work their magic. I'm quite excited to see what they do really, so I didn't want to put too many boundaries or rules in there. How can I how can I work with this? How can I make it contemporary? How can I use their traditional cross stitch to without being exploitative, but to kind of give it a contemporary Western feel. Keys are a very relevant topic for them as Palestinian refugees are forced to leave their homes. One remnant they can keep is this key and maybe they can return one day. And maybe from what they know how to do, see how they can transform that and just like create other shapes that are a bit more maybe contemporary or that still remains the traditional aspect. But um, they can then implement themselves in a more like global and contemporary market. And it was the idea of keeping the craft alive but bringing it to the Western world. As much as I might have designed the product, they're the ones creating it and the time and the energy put into it. Like, I almost feel like it's their product it's not mine, even if I've designed it. I hope that they will be able to develop um, new work, having had that experience of um, experimenting and being playful with the original designs and bringing them forward to be their own identity for today. What, uh, what are your hopes for the future of women in Hebron? To be designers like you. Hi everybody, just I want to tell you what you saw in the first video, it's just little, you saw just four minutes, we saw 24 minutes all the whole life. 
I mean, if we want to talk about the occupation, we don't have any problem with Jewish people. We had just problem with Zionist people and what they believe and what, what they never believed to share and how they came and they occupied the land and they want to kick the rest of the people they already left there, they want to kick us out. And the plan now for the new Palestinian state, and we don't know just in two weeks what should be happened for us, but we are waiting. It's not surprised me, but we will see what ha what's going on. But again, what, uh, the, what's the situation in Hebron? It's very hard. You never imagine how you can live under this occupation 24 hours. Yeah. 24 hours, there is no, you never feel you are free. You never feel you are a human being. Always the so settlers and soldiers, they are bothering you. They came to your home, they destroyed your life, they do their best for, to kick you from your home. Even if they cannot come to kick you, just they make the life very hard for you for your children, even for myself, my, my two sons, one of them, he'd been arrested six times, and the other one three times, and they left the home because I live in the old city of Hebron. And if you, if you know what's the old city of, of Hebron, it's divided by Oslo, by H1 and H2. And H2, it's under Israeli control, really under Israeli control. But H1, just as the paper they signed, just for the PA. And it's joke when they talk about government or Palestinian state, it's joke because we don't have land. We don't have really government. It's decoration. What I believe it's decoration. It's nothing help with our government because they are not in our side. They are in the Israeli side and they help the Israeli side. Always they are the Israeli hand. If the Israeli and they cannot arrest anybody, they told the PA to arrest them and they already did. Many problems for us. I mean, we stuck between both sides. What we can do, like, I am a mother. What I can do if my children, they cannot find job, like every, all the women there. What we can do, the only things what we do, we have to do our own living. We don't want to be rich. We, don't wa we are not looking for fancy car, for fancy clothes, for fancy house. We are just looking to stay there because I believe if I open my house, it's my resisting to keep my shop open. This is, for me, it's a lot. Because if I go or leave my shop, the settlers, they will come and they will stay in my shop or in my home. And the old city, it's not my home. I mean, I moved from village. And my village, I will tell you the story about my village. My village is close to 1948. The land is taken in 1948, and we are at the border. And w when the war, hap the war happened last time uh, in 1948, they took the whole land for the people at the villages. We don't, any, uh, any, we don't have any land more. They took it and they pushed us out. They kicked us out, I mean. And later, when they start to build the wall, they just moved the border, the fence again, and they built the wall, and now the wall it's eight meters like this and three meters f fence up. I mean, who can fly to do this? Even you can see your land and you cannot farm your land. Instead of this, they brought a lot of people. They are not uh, Jewish. Even they are not Jewish, but they became Israeli citizen because they told them it's good life. Come and you can stay there. And they took our homes and our land. Can you believe that? And in the same time, they took what do you think about two solutions? What kind of solution you want to give me? What kind of peace you want to give me? You are already taking everything. You follow us in 1967. You are not leaving us. We have 160, 196 settlements. It's built in the West Bank. You know before Oslo how much land we have? We have 72. Now you never imagine how we had. We have 12. And they talk about New Palestine. I don't know. I don't know, I don't understand the stupid Trump and his son-in-law, I, I always forget his name. What, what, it's not his business, it not, it's not his land, it's not his people to talk, but what I believe, because your government, they did the same for India, and they want to remove us even from the, the map. They want to delete 
for a sign from this. They never, we never can give up. Even they kill all of us, we will have a new generation, inshallah, and they will keep fighting for our resisting. We are not fighting again for their religion. We are fighting for our right, and we should have our right. And all the people, they support us. And if you ask me what we can support, you can support us to stand, to do our right, because they make it very hard for us. I mean, why I have to be here in America to do my business? Really, I'm suffering a lot. You never imagine how I'm tired. Two months I left my family, my children, and I'm traveling from place to place. If I am hungry, if I'm thirsty, if I cannot find a place to stay back, I'm looking to sell this stuff to go back with some money. Even it's not my money, but I want to help other people. Believe me, why I have to be like this? I can do it in my country. It's much better for me. I can keep my dignity with me, but even I am here, I didn't lose my dignity, but I feel sometimes I am homeless. I don't know where I go, because if I cannot find a place to stay, I cannot go to the hotel to pay the money. And I want to, to keep the money for the ladies, because they are waiting. The, the people there, they can have half the, of the salary, sorry, of their salary now, and it's, the economy is very bad in this time. Since 2016, it's, it's the worst for us. And this year, it's nothing. I can talk about the old city, it's already done. And it should be taken soon because the plan, all, all, all the area C, it should be, goes to the Israeli side. And they want to keep the settlement. And they want even the main road, we have it just in the West Bank, they want to take it and they want to, op they start opening a new road for us. I mean, what kind of peace you want to, go to give us? And Trump, look about your people. When I went to New York, it's full of homeless. He has to look for his people. Better than to look for Israeli people. Really, he has to look for his people. And we are not the people who did the Holocaust. I'm sorry, I feel very sad about what's happened for them. But we are not the people who do it, did it. But we have Holocaust in Palestine every day. People, they have to understand. We have massacre every day. Nobody talk about. They talk about fighting between Palestinian and Israeli. And it's not true. They, the, it, Israeli, it's criminal country. This is what I can see. And we are victims. You have to be with victims, people. You have to open your eyes. You have to open your ears. And you can see there is people, they are suffering there. And if you want to follow your, our news, it's easy for you to follow. Go to Al Jazeera. Go. I mean, internet showing a lot of stories from here, video here, YouTube here. You can see and you can, if you want to be more honest, come to our side and you can see. You can see, you never imagine how's the life. But we still smile and breathe because we believe. This is our land. We never gave up like the people when they kicked them from 48 and they still had their keys until now because they thought they will go back until two weeks and now 71 years and nobody go, goes back again. And now they said nobody can go back again. I mean, why you have to bring all the people from everywhere and you give them Israeli citizens and even my land? I cannot go to visit. I cannot go to live. I cannot live my, build my house. They came and they demolished your home. They cut your, your trees. You wake up just at the, no at the morning, you find your trees, it's already cut or burned. Your farm, you are waiting the whole, win the whole time, just summer to wait for the harvest. They burned your, your farm. I mean, what kind of life? What kind of freedom you want to give me or peace? I'm very angry about Trump. I hope next time, when you have the election, all of you go and vote. Vote for the right people. Please, come on, please. You, this is the only things you can help us, to vote for the right people. We are not waiting for your money. We are not waiting for your food. We are not waiting for uh, everything just to feel we are human beings. I mean, I'm sorry to tell like this. I, I saw your dogs. They are treated better than us. I'm sorry. They are treated better than us. I don't have like your dog life. I never have it. You know, they give even for the water. They control the water like three weeks or one month. 
You can have fewer ones. How I can do, how I can deal with the house? You want to clean, you want to cook, you want to have a shower, especially in summer, you need shower, you need the water. But I mean, the settlers, they have a swimming pool, they have all everything, they never cut the water for them, they have good life, but why? I am a human being, you came to my, to my land and you occupied me, you should. By law, you should give me, uh, by international law, you should give me everything, what I need. And also again, when they arrested the children, I never understand in which law. Just what I believe in Israeli law, they can put children in prison. And they judge them for, there is one he's in the prison now, his cousin, he was killed with him, and they left him bleeding, and he's from Jerusalem, bleeding until he want to finish his, his uh, to die. And when the settlers, they came, they, try, they start to throw in, like this, him by the legs, or to, to kick him by the legs. And after now, he's at the prison, eight, 13 years. He, he's at the prison now, 18 years. Who believed that? Who believed? And yesterday, there, there is a little boy, he was 14, and they cut his leg at the hospital, in prison. Even he's at the hospital, at the bed of the hospital, he's in prison. Who believed that? Who's talking about that? But if the Israeli, they have any problem, everybody talk about this. Everybody said, oh, there is Israeli attack. Is Hamas, they are bombing Gaza. But why they are bombing? I am not Hamas. I am not Fatih. I am not part of political group. I am Palestinian. But why? Because you put them in prison and you kill them every day. This is why people, they have to open their eyes. Please, you have to open your eyes by you. Be, I believe we will have change. Just open your eyes. This is what we need from you. Again, we don't need your money to, to send money to Palestine or to send food. We don't need food. We can breathe just the air and it's enough for me. I can have little water and it's enough for me. I'm not looking to have a big meal or all this stuff. Not me, the whole Palestinian who live in the West Bank. They, are, they, have, they don't have better life in Gaza. We have bad life. We stuck between the PA and with, between the Israeli side, and it's very hard for us. And this is why we started our project to help our ourselves. When I cannot have a fine job like you, I didn't finish my education. Even I finished. We have 123,000 students. They finished their education, and they are not working, and they cannot find job. They can't find job. Can you believe that? Why I have to leave again from my country to come here to do the business? I prefer to do it in, in my country. I hope you will come and you will see the life, how it's very complicated. And again, the project to help 150 families and you saw, and we, I had a lot of stuff and I'm leaving in three days. I hope you can do your best to, to help if you can. If it's not, don't feel you have to do this. I appreciate your coming, you're listening, and thank you so much. Well, can we take some questions? Thank you, by the way. Thank you. I have heard so many stories of um, the Israelis holding goods, Palestinian goods, at checkpoints. And I'm wondering, is it sometimes difficult for you to obtain the threads, the fabric, the equipment that you need for your cooperative? We have it from the West Bank. Uh, we have the whole stuff from the West Bank. We don't have anything from Israel. But if I go, now if when I come to America, it's not difficult for me to come with the stuff. They never ask me. But if I go back, problem, I cannot take the, the stuff with me as it. They don't care if you leave. They care if you enter again what you have, and if you have money, and where you been, what you talked about, this is what they care. But if you leave, they want all of us to leave from there. Thank you. Yeah, you are with Any other questions? I have a question for you. Um, so do you live in uh, which part of 
Khalil do you live in? I live in H2. And H my okay. shop, you, he saw, he show you what is the settlement and what is the, the, the roof, the top of the roof where they, they throw the garbage and right, all the right. stuff. Yeah. My shop here, the settlement here is called Abraham Adlin. I'm so under the settlement and my house here very close to Petro Mani. So do you have to uh, interact with settlers often? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we have, yeah, we have settlers to every Saturday. The settlers, they came to, uh, to the our side, I mean, and uh, he talked about two other streets, what uh, the main show, the, the main street they took during the massacre at the mosque. I, I forgot to tell you, there is massacre in 1994, and Baruch Goldstein, the, the Brooklyn man, the Brooklyn Zionist man, he came to Palestine and he killed the people during the prayer time, and after they divide the mosque, after seven months, Close, they divide the mosque, and they put three checkpoints just to go to the mosque, and they start, we have 101 closure exactly. This is, you can see the main street, Shohada Street. We are not allowed to be there anymore. It's forbidden for us. We have to take the other road, it's just three meters like this. It's like between the tunnels, and you can go to the mosque. But through this, you can pass three checkpoints just to go to the mosque in front of the mosque. Forget about the flying one, they can put it sometimes here or here. But every Saturday, the settlers, they decide because it's Shabbat for them. And uh, I don't know it's their religion. But they came to our side. And the reason why they came, or the issue why they came, they came to talk about the, their story or their uh, history. The history, they've been there 2,000 years before. And Hebron, it's belong for them. And Abraham and Sarah, they are parents, their uh, parents. And they bought uh, the, the cave. And the, the cave is buried there, Abraham and, uh, you and uh, Jacob and Sarah and Rebecca. They buried there. And they said, that people, it's belong for us, that they're, they're our own people. And it's not for Muslim. But Abraham, he's the father for everybody. We are from the same parents, all of us, Christian, Jews, Muslim, with people without any religion. We are all of us from the same parents. But I mean, during the talks, they bring more people to be in their side. And they talk about, again, the history. And they can raise money for the settlers. So they what, do, what do they do on the Saturdays? Just they do, they mention in houses, it was belonged for them before. And 40 shops, it's, it's for them. And always they said, we will come back. We will return back. Like, we will come back to you again. I mean, when they came, you saw they have weapons, and they have, uh, they controlled by 2,000 soldiers. They are living there around 750 so settlers, protected by 2,000 soldiers. And from 2016, they put more soldiers to be at the area to protect them. I mean, they li we have four settlements very small settlement, and the biggest one is in, in front of the Brahimi Mosque. The biggest one where, uh, where Baruch Goldstein, he buried, and he, they have... Uh, Isn't it kind of, it's kind of funny that on a Saturday, which is a holy day for Jewish people, they would use it to harass <laughs> Palestinians. Yeah, I, I mean, they cannot... Isn't that, that's kind of funny, isn't it? Yeah, it's funny, you know why? Because they cannot <laughs> use money. They cannot, uh, like, use the lies. A lot of stuff they can't use. But the only thing they can use to bother you or to beat you or to attack you, they can do this. It's not forbidden for them. It's, uh, it's like, uh, yani something good for them. A lot of Ameri uh, Jewish American tourists will go to Israel and come back with what I recognize to be Palestinian crafts the glass, the, the embroidery. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm, you know, they think it's Israeli. They'll come back and say, oh, I bought this in Israel. It's, you know, it's Israeli glass. It's Israeli, <coughs> it's an Israeli dress. Where do they, I mean, are they buying things from Palestinians and selling them over in, in Israel? Yep, or do they have the Palestinians working for them? I mean, how, yep, how does that happen? I want to ask you, before 1948, can you see in the map there is country, name of country, it's Israel? It's new. 
of course, it's I know that. It's something new, but people, they, they lie and they want to believe what they lie. They, there is yeah. country there. It's not, there is no Israeli country there. They, they make it country, and they said for the whole Palestine, it's Israel, and this is not good. We, it's Palestinian land and it's occupied land. I, I know that. And all the U United Nations, they know it's occupied land. And it's 1948, but they gave the name Israel. They, when you ask them, where you been? They said in Israel, even for me. The first time I, I went to go during JFK, they, to they told me, what is Palestine? I mean, you already believe Palestine and you put Israel and one day it will be moved. You know why? because we, we will fight for our living. We don't want to kill them like what they believe. We want to kill them and kill us. But if you want to be our guest, we can agree. If it's not, they have to move. It's not my, our problem. They came visitors, they have to go from where they came. It's not our problem. It's not our problem. The, yeah, but uh, m my question was, these people have never been in what is now Palestine no, or the West Bank. No, no, they, they came to us, like I answered you. They came to the West Bank, but they said it's Israel. <laughs> no, a lot of them have never been in the West Bank, except maybe in, in Bethlehem. And, but they still, in the, being in Tel Aviv, they can buy... Uh, no, they cannot buy it from Tel Aviv. Oh, they no. used to. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know my family did. They did? Yeah, they used, yeah. They, uh, maybe I, I know... Something, I, but they stolen everything. Maybe they stole something and they have... They start it's business very and they it's said very it's, possible. Uh, I was wondering it's traditional Israeli stuff. I don't know that. Yeah, it's I know they would never believe me when I said it was Palestinian. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lela, could you tell us something more about what it means to be a parent bringing up children in Hebron? How, how difficult is it for a mother to be bringing up her children in Hebron? Like not only in Hebron, but it's the most mm. in Hebron, because like what I told you, if they are just three or four years, they can defend them. And I've been arrested for little girl, she was 13 years. And I put, they put both of us at, at the police station for six hours after they questioned her and after they kept us out, even she's a little girl, they can judge them, they don't care. If you are a child, if you are a man, if you are an old man, they don't care. But people, they are, most of the people, they left from the old city. And there is a new people, they came to live, like me and other people, just to protect the houses from the settlers. E even you can pay yani, your whole life for this, but even you, sometimes you cannot feel you want to smile from what you saw, but you want to be there because this is the only thing. I can believe I can do it. I cannot have weapon and I can go to fight. I can open my store, I can op protect my house by taken by the settlers and it's enough for me. And this is why a lot of people, they do the same, but they still believe me suffering. It's, m it's very hard, even if your child, you, he go to a kindergarten, you have to go with him. But our children, they can go through the, through the checkpoint and they search their bags and they can do a lot of problems for them, and we don't have a lot of witnesses now. After they kick, kick the observers, you heard about them, CIPS, they kick them now, and there is no witnesses uh, anymore. I mean, the volunteers there, they can have, they stop them to be far away from the, the, the schools or from the checkpoints, and now they start to build fence in front of the mosque. It means they want to build the new Palestine. Seven years ago, I went on a breaking, uh, breaking the silence tour. Yeah, with Yehuda Stokes. Yes, yes, with him. No, it was he w was Did also that, there, but, he but I uh, he was also there. Yeah, and um, it was to South Hebron Hills, I think it was called. Yes. And it was a small village that had been uh, removed by settlers yes. on a hill, and it began with S. But Susia, yes, Susia. Do you, can you tell me how those people are? If that has that have all those people gone? They were living in tents yes. uh, seven years ago. Have they been removed? 
So I was wondering, what are children being arrested for? Are um, the Israelis, are they making up things to arrest these children for? Or are they accusing them of stupid crimes that aren't even worthy of being arrested for? <laughs> like, what's the reason? No, they or commonly, <coughs> at least. Always they are uh, accusing them for throwing stones or for uh, going to places they cannot be there. But they are kids, what they want to do. They are kids. And even with stones, what they can do. They cannot kill soldiers with stones. But I mean, always they go to their school and they start shooting kill guys everywhere, bombing the school. And this is why the, the children, they became more like, uh, I cannot say violent, but they, they wake them up very early to resist. This is what I can say. Even these child, they make them more open mind to resist them because they know we are under occupation and why this army they are here with their weapons. And this is why even these little child, because our children, they are ma never children, they are men. When they born, they are men. They never treated like children anywhere or child anywhere. It's different. Hello, Leila. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the Hebron Cooperative, the business itself, and so and how does it work? So is it the eight villages and yes. uh, the um, they make the embroidery items, and then they are they brought to, the, uh, you know, the old yes. city to sell everything, or yeah, and then and it. does it rely on um, visitors to, to Palestine, from uh, outsiders, or, or do Palestinians? Buy a lot of the things, and um, and is it expanding? You know, there are eight villages. Has it been growing over time? Just the business in general. How has yes. it been working? I mean, we we are from eight villages. We are 150 from different villages, and each village they make their uh, own stuff. I mean, cars, purses, different things. But as the center, we have center in in one of the villages called Edna. This is uh, where the women's center there. And at the center, we the center like give the material and the to the ladies, and the ladies they take the design. They go home because still by the culture they controlling the woman to to be outside the house. They have to work from inside, and they goes back to their homes. They do the f stuff, and they give it back to the cooperative. And the cooperative they have uh, three ladies they working in the in the machine to do the finishing. They did the finishing. After, if we have order b orders by online, we can do the shipping. If we if we don't have, we keep the stuff at the center, and we send a lot of stuff to the two shops in Hebron. But when it's hard to get customers, like now because the Israeli and they control the tools, they goes by Israeli buses, and they came just to visit the mosque because they said. We want to visit the Ibrahim Mosque. They go and visit, and they cannot come to our store. And then for whom I want to do business? For the local people, I can't do that, because the local, they can make it. If you know how to do it now, you never can buy from me. You can say, I will do it by myself and to spend this money. I know it takes time. And if you want to do it, it takes time for you to do it. You can say it's expensive, but it's not. 
because you never can work for two weeks or 10 days for $20. But for us, we do it. You know why? Because we, we believe it's something comes good for us. And this is the only job we can do. This is the only job we can have money from to help our children, to, to help ourselves, to open our houses. And it's not easy life, like you can find job uh, anywhere or if you don't like the embroidery, you can go and you can have a, you can have a good job. No, it's not, it's not by your choice. This is something, education, make it very hard, fighting you for your own living. Then you, nev you forget about the land. This is what they did. They want you to do, to fight for your living, and then you never think about the occupation, forget about it. This is what's going on in Palestine. Uh, so to add to Shavan's question, can you, exp is it hard to export? No. To like other Arab countries around you, is it hard or? With Arab countries, I'm sorry to tell, the, we never get help by Arab countries. We never get help by uh, Arab countries. I never been in, uh, in any Arab country before. And they never helped me. The only people they helped me most, churches, Jews going for peace, and few Palestinians here, I mean, nobody else. Few. And like Shivan, he helped me to, to take up this, and I didn't right. know him. He, know me, he knew me through Martin and Gail. I was wondering if you would talk about the young women. Um, are they interested in the embroidery and the traditional designs or modern designs in learning the needlework? Yeah, I mean, for me, when I am just very little, my mom, she teach me how to do it. She told me, I still remember until now, Mom, if one day you cannot do your, do, yeah, do your living, you can just depend on your side, in your hand. This is, your hands is just help you to do your living. And this I still even teach my children. When you cannot find any job or anything, you can do something by your hand and you can survive by this. And the new generation now, they are also learn how to do it. We never, because it's our heritage, it's our art, it's everything, what I believe, it's everything for me. Each piece, it means for me something. I know people, maybe they said, oh, it's not like my taste, or no, it means something good for me, because I do it from by my heart, because I believe something will come back to me again. This is why we teach our girls how to do it. Even, believe me, some boys now, they learn how to do it. Some boys, they learn, because even the men, they have hard life also. The men, they have very hard life to go t to find job. And if you want to go to Israel to find job, like what they said, Israel, you should apply for permission, and you should, ha you, sh you have to be clean, I mean, not blacklist with any of your family, and you have only one blacklist from your family, then you never get permission to go and you don't have chance to, to work there. And if you work without permission, you, they can put you in prison and you have to pay money for your child. If he's in prison, you have to pay for his food. Even American government, they paid for the prisoner, but we have to pay for everything for our children. Any more questions? Thank you so much. Thank you, Leila. Thank you so much Thank for you being so here. Much.